All right, everybody, welcome back to yet again another season preview. And today we have the Carolina Hurricanes, a team who I've I have been hard on uh, in the past, definitely. But this season or last season, per se, uh, they kind of proved me wrong. I thought they had a really bad offseason in 2021. But, you know, they really proved me wrong and really turned this team around. And now there are some questions. There definitely are some questions. But I think this team has no excuses but to repeat what happened this past year. So last season for the Hurricanes, they went 54-20-8 for 116 points. They scored 278 goals and only let in 202. And they lost in round two to the New York Rangers. Obviously, that was a very tough series. Um, Canes really struggled in the playoffs. Uh, to win outside of home. They didn't win at all, in fact, uh, when they weren't at home. So they really re relied on home ice advantage, and eventually the Rangers got them in Game 7. So here we go. They're out, and it's unfortunate, but it happened. Uh, Sebastian Alho was your leading scorer with 37 goals, 44 assists for 81 points, and then your goaltender was obviously Frederick Anderson with a 35-14-3 record with a 2.17 goals against average. Again, going back to the playoffs, it wasn't entirely to their fault. Anderson was out. Ronta was out even for a little bit there. They had Kachet off in net. Like, you know, this team just had, you know, some of those outrageous goalies in there. So, unfortunately, obviously, they couldn't, just couldn't get past the Rangers. I think the goalies did play a role in it, uh, 100%. Uh, but, this team did have quite an, an eventful offseason. And it wasn't, it could have been worse. It, it definitely could have been way worse. But it wasn't really all too bad either. Uh, starting off here with their departures, you got Vincent Trocek, significant uh, top six center loss. Nino Niederreiter, a solid right wing. Uh, Tony D'Angelo, solid top two defenseman. Derek Stepan, uh, Ian Cole, Max Domi, and Steve Lorenz. So they lost some good people there. And then obviously, I actually I forgot to mention this is my bad. Uh, Stepan is coming back on a PTO. It's not entirely certain he's going to, going to sign with the team once he gets done with that PTO. But he's coming back on a PTF. So he is coming back to the Carolina Hurricanes. Those are some hefty departures. Some hefty departures to their top six, 100%. Uh, they took a big hit in defense with D'Angelo being gone. And they lost some depth as well. Obviously, Domi was, an, was a trade deadline acquisition. Lawrence was kind of... He was a solid bottom six forward. But he really wasn't a huge loss. I know Canes fans are going to diss me for that. but um, And then obviously, there you have Ian Cole. It was a third pairing defenseman. Uh, at best this year. So obviously, um, they had some departures, but they kind of did make up for it. So they acquired uh, Max Pacioretty and Dylan Coglin for literally nothing from the Vegas Golden Knights. And then they also acquired Brent Burns in that trade with the Sharks. And then they also signed Andre Casse in free agency. So they really did replace some of the things that they did lose. Uh, I, I will admit that. Uh, obviously, they got back a solid depth defenseman in Coglin, which kind of replaces Cole. Uh, they brought back Burns, which replaces D'Angelo. And then they obviously brought in some guys like Kase and Pacioretty, who unfortunately is going to be out for uh, the beginning of the season here, probably up until probably mid-February, to be honest with you. Uh, it's not it's not looking so good for Pacioretty. He has a torn Achilles. I said it right. So um, it's, it's unfortunate, but those things happen. Uh, but anyways, looking at your top six lineup for the Carolina Hurricanes, starting off here with Andre Spensikov, Sebastian Ajo, and Tuevo Teravainen. Then you have Max Pacioretty. When he comes into the lineup, that's probably what he'll be. Second line uh, left wing. You have Jesperi Kakinemi and Seth Jarvis as your top six there. I obviously like Jarvis uh, on that top six role. It's kind of difficult to push him down and push him up and put Natchez down. But Jarvis had a really good year, uh, definitely. And I think, obviously, this is a very solid top six. You got guys like Svechikov, Aho, and Taravainen. Without a doubt, this team should be good on that end. If you look at their bottom six... You got some young guys coming in here. Starting off here with Jordan Marnock. He's he's not young. Uh, Jordan Saul is also not young. Natchez is young. Uh, then you have Stefan Noason, uh, Jack Drury, and Jesper Foss. Then you have Jamison Rees, Ryan Suzuki, and Andre Kase. Obviously, if Derek Stepan comes in from that PTO, he probably will take that fourth-line center spot, maybe just become an additional player who comes in and plays a few games. But apart from that, right now, it's looking like Drury could be the fourth-line center for your Carolina Hurricanes this coming season. So obviously you have a lot of young guys there. You have Jamison Rees, Jack Drury, Ryan Suzuki, and you know guys like Faust and uh, Natchez. So you got some young guys heading into the bottom six, and I think it could play could play an interesting role on um, what happens to these lineups here because obviously you have some young guys who Canes fans have been hyping up. These some of these guys do have good potential, but we'll see how they pan out in the NHL. Uh, you look at their defense. Their defense, I actually 
like again this season. Uh, you have Jacob Slavin and Brent Burns, your first pairing, Brady Shea and Brett Pesci, uh, Dylan Coughlin and Ethan Bear. Then you have Maxim Lajoie and Jalen Chatfield as your uh, depth players to come up and play a little bit uh, this coming season. So I like that defense, very solid uh, top four there, and your third pairing isn't all too bad either. We'll see how Coughlin does uh, with, the, with the Hurricanes at the NHL level. We'll see how he can do. Uh, obviously, you really have no young guys uh, coming into this lineup that are new. That are new young guys. Well, there's obviously Brent Burns, but he's not young. Uh, the new young guys coming into this lineup, besides Lajoie, he's fairly young. So maybe he can put up some solid points and do well for the Hurricanes this year. Uh, you look at your goals at Tandem, you obviously have Frederick Anderson and Antti Ranta, and then your backup or your third string is uh, Pyotr Kachetov. So I like their goals at Tandem. I like their goals at Tandem since last season. Uh, very solid. Should be good again this year. So moving on to your biggest questions for the Carolina Hurricanes. Well, we got two of them. So my one question is, how is the left wing side going to do? That is, that is my big question. Because when you look at that left wing side right now, fully healthy, your tops, your your left wing side, Spetsnikov, Pacioretty, Marnuk, Noesen, and Reese. Without Pacioretty, that it's not it's not all too good. You're gonna have Marnuk up in the top six. So obviously. Um, that, that is going to be concerning how that left wing side does, but, um, I think they'll hold out. I think they'll probably hold out. Uh, patch comes back in mid February. Maybe they can make some moves before then. But I mean, the only really, when you think about it, they really can't because when they do and when patch comes back, they'll be in a cap crunch. So, I mean, what are they going to do? Uh, but still is pretty good to, uh, at least have some options there. And I think guys like Yamis and Rees and maybe some other guys down below would get chances uh, since Pacioretty is injured. We definitely will see Rees come into the NHL uh, this season, hopefully. Uh, anyways, you look at your point projections now. You look at your basic point meter according to the Hockey News' fantasy er, fantasy guide there. Uh, so starting out here, they have Aho leading the way with 80 points, and they have Sveshnikov in second with 75. They have Tara Vinen in third with 66. Brent Burns uh, with 62 points, and then they have Max Pacioretty there with 58. Uh, the hockey news obviously made this before Max Petrie was was um became injured. So obviously there he's probably not going to hit that fifty eight point peak. But or, or maybe maybe he comes, maybe Petrie secretly Connor McDavid. Maybe we're just getting fooled all along. But um anyways I don't really think that happens. Uh, Petrie being fifth in scoring I think guys like Natures and Jarvis will definitely rise above him. But nonetheless I think it makes sense. Aho is probably leading this team. Uh, Svechnikov probably leading behind him. So pretty much. Uh, it makes sense. Uh, moving on to your sleeper or bust, uh, it's actually Seth Jarvis. So, Carolina scores to, by committee, but no one exceeded expectations more than rookie Seth Jarvis, who averaged 13 minutes and 53 seconds per game, but regularly played up in the first line when chances arose. His numbers will surely improve in his sophomore season, unless if he goes into that sophomore slump, which we see plenty, which isn't a huge deal, but it is something you got to think about. So, Obviously, I think Jarvis is good. I've, I've been high on Jarvis for a long time. I remember when he was drafted in 2020, I was very high on him. And I think he will be a very good player. And I think he will definitely improve uh, this coming season. But anyways, moving on to your next question, likely the biggest. Do they make the playoffs? I mean, really, they have, they, I mean, I, I honestly say they're kind of weaker. They're, they're a little bit weaker. They have some good, they made some good moves. But obviously there with losing Trocek in your top six, losing D'Angelo, losing guys like Niederreiter as well, um, losing some of your younger players. They did get guys back. I'm not going to deny that. They got Burns. They got Pacioretty. They got players back in return. But with Pacioretty being out for six months, and I don't like that center core. Uh, I think that center core is definitely – I mean, I don't – it's not that I don't like it. It's just that it's weaker than this past year's one. Obviously, Trocek leaving takes a, takes a big hit to that top six. So obviously there – I think they'll probably be a little bit weaker, but I think they'll definitely make the playoffs. I don't I don't think that's a question. Uh, I think they'll definitely make it. And obviously, I for, you guys are probably asking me, um, Nordic, you forgot one of the biggest questions. Do they overcome that round two hump? Maybe. Um, it, honestly, her, Carolina I've always been high on. I think they maybe can make it. Um, they can maybe overcome that second round hump. It all depends on who they're playing. Uh, to be honest with you, it all depends on who this team's playing. And this team, this team, although they made the conference finals with a lot of players in this core, they are still fairly young, and they still have a little ways to go before they are at their peak. So obviously, they're they're heading in the direction though. They should be good for the next couple of years. Been very high on Carolina for a long time. But anyways, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Thank you all very much for watching. For us, Portland, I really do appreciate it. Make sure to subscribe down below if you are new. Excuse me. And anyways, thank you all very much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video.
Adios.